Hey everyone, today we're diving into Black Ops 6 to get your settings dialed in for the best performance and visuals possible. Whether you're pushing for maximum frames or looking for the right balance between visuals and smooth gameplay, I've got you covered. In this video, I'll go over my universal steps for optimizing the game for all systems, and then we'll look at different settings tailored for various setups and gaming styles, whether you like maximum performance or an optimized blend of visuals and frames. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, let's start things off with something simple but essential, Windows updates. Yeah, I know they tend to pop up at the most inconvenient times, but trust me, keeping Windows updated is more than just getting rid of those annoying pop-ups. Microsoft frequently pushes performance improvements and bug fixes that can really help your games run smoother. You can easily check for updates by hitting the start key on your keyboard and just start typing Windows update. Click the check for updates button and if there are any updates available, download and install them. After that, restart if necessary. After you've restarted, go back and check for updates again. Sometimes there's a sneaky second wave of updates waiting. Once you see the magical you're up to date message, congratulations, you've just completed step one. And for those of you fortunate enough to be running an X3D chip, make sure you've installed update package KB5041587. This one contains an X3D specific patch that can seriously boost performance. I saw about a 10% increase after installing it, so it's definitely worth your time. This patch was later rolled into a universal update, KB5043076, so look for either one of those numbers. Next up, BIOS updates. Now, I get it. BIOS updates sound intimidating, like you're about to hack into the matrix or something, but honestly, it's not as scary as it seems, and it can be a total game changer for your system's performance. Think of it like getting a firmware update for your rig's brain. Trust me, you don't want your PC running on outdated instructions. To start, head over to your motherboard manufacturer's website, Find your specific board and grab the latest BIOS update. You'll usually find it under support or downloads. Then follow the instructions they provide. Each board can be slightly different. Save the file to a USB and get ready to flash that BIOS. Flashing your BIOS is like your system's version of a memory wipe. It's perfectly safe if you follow the steps and don't lose power in the middle of it. Just take it slow, double check everything, and before you know it, your PC could be running smoother and faster. You can check out the short video I made walking you through a BIOS update on a Gigabyte board here. Okay, now that you've got your BIOS updated, let's move on to configuration. There are two key things you'll want to adjust for optimal performance. There are plenty of advanced settings you could tweak, but honestly, they tend to offer minimal gains unless you're really into fine tuning and have the experience to back it up. So let's stick to the basics here that make a real difference. First up, overclocking your memory or RAM. For most of you, this is as simple as enabling the XMP, DOCP, or Expo profile in your BIOS. These profiles are preset by the manufacturer to match your memory kit, so it's basically plug and play. Easy, right? But if you're running an AM4 CPU, there's one more step. Make sure your F clock, M clock, and U clock are all set to the same speed. That's your ideal setup. For AM5 users, you'll usually want to set your F clock to around 2000. That's a pretty safe setting. If you have good silicon, you can go higher, but 2000 is a good setting to start at. And with AM5, the F clock can be independent from the M clock and U clock, but make sure your M clock equals your U clock for best results. Next, you want to enable resizable bar. This allows your CPU to access your GPU's memory more efficiently which means more frames in game for the most part and who doesn't want that right now for those of you running amd cpus here's a little bonus consider using a negative undervolt using amd's pbo or precision boost overdrive this is where you adjust your cpu's power settings to give you better efficiency and performance setting a negative curve lowers voltage under load giving you cooler temps without sacrificing performance this works for both vanilla and x3d chips and most motherboards with pbo tuning will have a similar menu as i'm showing you here just follow the steps and boom cooler faster better if you want more in-depth videos make sure you check out these videos on the screen right now. I have a video for the 5000s and the 7000s here. Next up, let's tackle a few app settings that can squeeze out a little extra performance. First on the list is Google Chrome. If you're like me and leave Chrome open in the background while gaming, you might be surprised how much of your system's resources it can eat up. One quick fix is to head into Chrome's advanced settings and disable hardware acceleration. This helps reduce the graphical load on your GPU while you're in game. Next up is Discord. Most of us will have Discord running 24 seven, but like Chrome, it can hog more resources than you'd think on default settings. To lighten the load, go into Discord settings and turn off hardware acceleration. While you're there, you 
might also want to disable the in-game overlay. It's handy, but it can mess with your FPS more than you realize. Moving on, we're going to look at a Windows setting that's very often overlooked. It's called Enhanced Pointer Precision. It's enabled by default and it sounds like a good thing, right? But what it really does is apply a sensitivity algorithm to your mouse movement depending on the speed of the cursor, and it makes it harder to build muscle memory and land your shots accurately. To fix this, just head into your mouse settings and make sure it's disabled. Your aim will feel a lot more consistent once it's gone. Next up, we need to make sure your GPU drivers are up to date. This is one of the easiest ways to boost your system's performance without changing any hardware. Open up either NVIDIA GeForce Experience or the NVIDIA app if you're using that, or AMD Adrenaline software if you're on an AMD GPU. Then check for the latest driver updates, install, and I would always recommend doing a clean install. If you suspect you have driver issues, then you can always use DDU to do a full reset and clean install. As usual, I have another video covering that. If you're interested in a quick walkthrough, go ahead and click the link in the upper right hand corner in the video description or at the end of the video. Next, let's take a look at GPU control panel settings. While these settings won't drastically impact overall performance, they do make a difference. So here they are. I'm currently using a 4070, so let's start with the NVIDIA control panel. For the adjust image settings option, I leave it on use the advanced 3D image settings. And here are the changes I make. In the global settings tab, the only adjustment I make is setting the shader cache size from whatever the driver default is to unlimited. Then I switch over to program settings and select Call of Duty. In the program settings tab I change power management mode to prefer maximum performance. Then I change preferred refresh rate to highest available. Next is texture filtering and isotropic sample optimization. Turn that on. And lastly texture filtering to high performance. The last settings I adjust are the desktop color settings. I personally prefer bright and slightly oversaturated colors in my games, so I kick my gamma up to about 1.05 and the digital vibrance to 70%. Along with the in-game color filters, this makes the game look really beautiful in my opinion. When I'm using an AMD GPU, I don't really change many of the settings in the adrenaline control panel, but to achieve the same vivid color effects, I raise brightness to 25 and saturation to 125, then select vivid color enhancement. While you're at it, let's not forget about chipset drivers. These control how your CPU communicates with the rest of your system, and outdated drivers can hold back your performance. Head to your CPU support page, just look up your model and download the latest chipset drivers. It's a small step, but it can make a big difference in how efficiently your system runs. Now that we've covered the basics, let's dive into some specific optimizations based on your system and what you're aiming to get out of Black Ops 6. Whether you're going for high FPS for a competitive play or a balanced mix of visuals and performance, here's how to set it up. First, let's go to the graphics display tab. You're going to want to set your resolution to your monitor's native resolution most of the time. I'm running actually in 1440 here on a 4K monitor just because I'm making some videos in 1440 right now. But normally you want it on your monitor's native resolution. Run it in full screen exclusive and make sure your refresh rate matches your monitor's maximum refresh rate as well. Next, under custom frame rate limit, set it to unlimited to uncap your FPS and let your hardware reach its full potential. Or if you prefer to cap it, you can enter a value here. Now let's skip over the quality tab for now since preferences can vary there. We're going to go over that in a little more detail after this. So go to the view tab here, set your FOV between 100 and 120. A higher FOV increases your field of view, but makes targets appear smaller. So it can be harder to hit and track targets at max FOV. I personally like 110, but I'd recommend trying out 100, 110, and 120 to see what feels best for you. So here I'm going to focus on this target here and show you the difference between 100, 110, and 120. And you can kind of see the difference between between visibility and field of view. Easy way to tell the difference is look on the edges and see how much more you can see. I keep world motion blur off to prevent blur on moving targets. I'll show you the difference here. Notice the distortion of the image when motion blur is on. It looks cool, but it's harder to see things. So I personally leave world motion blur off, but weapon motion blur I leave on because I like the visual effect and it doesn't affect my target recognition. Here's a side by side of the visuals. My recommendation here is to leave world motion blur off, but weapon motion blur is totally a preference call. All right, so we've covered the display and view tabs, so we'll get into the quality settings now, which can vary depending on what you're after. Starting with competitive players aiming to maximize FPS, I think this represents the majority of online players looking for the lowest frame times, best 1% lows, and highest FPS possible. To achieve this, simply set your graphics preset to minimum, and I turn the render resolution up to 100. I wouldn't recommend setting it lower than 100 because technically it can increase performance but it 
comes at the cost of visibility, as you can see here. That's a 400% magnification of 50 versus 100% render scale. For upscaling and sharpening, Fidelity FX Cast provides the sharpest image, which makes it easier to spot targets. If you're willing to trade a bit of clarity for higher frames, DLSS or FSR3 can be good options. I'd suggest a balance preset for a good mix of visibility and performance. I wouldn't recommend using frame generation or fluid motion frames in online play as it can add a bit of input lag. Set the VRAM scale to 90 and leave the rest of the graphics settings as is. They'll be set to the minimum possible on this preset. With these adjustments, you'll be getting optimal performance for a competitive edge without sacrificing essential visibility. For those of you who are graphics junkies, I'd recommend going with the extreme preset. As you'd expect, this setting cranks up every graphics option to the maximum, delivering the best visual experience possible. The only tweak I'd suggest here is setting tessellation from near to all for even more detailed textures at greater distances. Alright, lastly, we're going to go over what I'm calling my pure optimized preset. I'm all about visuals and while I want my multiplayer games to run smoothly, I also want quality graphics for an immersive experience. So I found the right balance between visual fidelity and high performance here. I tested various settings to see which ones I could turn up without losing too much performance and after days of testing, I've landed on what I think is the perfect preset. So I put the minimum, pure, and extreme presets side by side in the in-game benchmark and as you can see, I'm within just a few percent of the performance of the minimum preset preset but the game looks way better visually not quite to the extreme level but much better than the minimum preset in my opinion so here are the options i select i change it to the basic graphic preset first and then i choose fidelity fx cast at 100 strength for texture resolution i change it from very low to normal and i leave texture filter and isotropic on normal Everything else I leave as is from the basic preset and I found that this gives me the best blend of performance and visuals. So try it out for yourself and let me know what you think. Alright, that wraps up my optimized settings for Black Ops 6. Whether you're focused on getting the highest FPS for competitive play, aiming for a balanced mix of visuals and performance, or just wanting the best graphics possible, these settings should help you get the most out of your hardware. If you found this guide helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more optimization tips and gaming content. We're currently less than 1500 subscribers away from hitting our goal of 10,000. So your support really means a lot. Let me know in the comments which settings work best for you or if there's anything else you'd like to see covered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.